What is going on? Charles Botenston here from BPI. We're going to be talking about new construction and new construction 101, new construction, which is in New York City, maybe a little bit different from where you are. You could be talking about a house. It could be talking about a neighborhood or a community. It could be even a conversion. So conversion is an existing building. They come in and they completely decimate the insides and then they convert it from a loft space or residential to high end condos or it could be a rental to condos. It could be even office space downtown in the financial district. You have a ton of buildings that are coming online that are condos that are stunning. And then you have ground up construction, which is pretty much what everything is in New York City nowadays. Obviously, there has been a lot of conversions in New York City. They take the existing building. Actually, downtown, there was one that was a hospital and they turned it into condos. Pre-war construction, it doesn't suit a lot of people. There's a, there's a multitude of reasons and we'll go over it. So the first thing is, and actually this is the best way, this is, this is a quote, which is, in Manhattan, more than anywhere in the world, people buy what reflects them. So if you really like new construction, which is brand new everything, modern, chic, sleek, or uh, white countertops, and everything is just so new and everything else, totally different than pre-war. It reflects what you like and what you don't like. So the pros of actually buying early, which is new construction. So you have new construction, which is you're usually buying off of a floor plan. So a floor plan, is probably a sales gallery that is not near the building or could be near the building, but they say, hey, listen, you know, down the block, here's the construction site. And then you have the sales gallery where you learn about the amenities, you look at the building, you look at the floor plan, you look at how it's gonna be built. Then there's some that I'm gonna be talking about buying later, where it's already constructed and you're going in. Obviously, it depends on the marketplace. If it's a bad marketplace, it's probably gonna be constructed and then you can actually walk the building. If it's a, an amazing marketplace or if it's undervalued product, then you, you're probably buying off of a floor plan. So number one is the pros of buying early. You have your choice of floor plans. This is probably the biggest thing is you have your choice of what it looks out onto. And nowadays they actually have drones that, that they kind of go up each floor and then they just take a 360 degree view. So you can see, okay, I'm going to be looking at the building or I'm going to be looking at the water tower across the street, or I'm going to have a view of the skyline. Whatever the case is, you're, you're going to be able to actually say, okay, at this floor, I have a clear view over the city or at this, at this floor plan, I'm actually going to be able to buy what I want and you're gonna buy early, and that's what developers want. They, they, they want to show that there's a tremendous amount of people that are interested in their product for two reasons. Number one is they have to go to the bank and say, we can continue financing, or they have metrics and goals they have to hit. Number three is that they wanna be able to push. We're 10% in contract, 15% in contract, 25% in contract, 30%, whatever the case is, they wanna be able to market that. So number one is choice of floor plans, views, and exposures. Number two is you have the opportunity to buy it at a lower price. This obviously depends completely on the marketplace, but if you're one of the first buyers in there, they wanna be able to push this out to the public and say we have 10% in, in contract, whatever the case is, they are willing to give you some incentives. Sometimes you have to pay for the the closing cost of the developer, which is completely new to most people. They also, they like to get few contracts signed. And this is, this is the biggest thing, is that the developers do not release units all at once. So they, they'll release batches of units. Here's the, the one bedrooms we have available. Meanwhile, they have more. Here are the two bedrooms that are available. Meanwhile, they have more. So in other words, when you're the first one to go in there, you go in and you show interest, the salesperson is probably gonna say, hey, listen, this one's not on the market, but it's coming available, or the developer hasn't released this yet. So when you're the first ones, you get your choice of, obviously, the views, the exposures, and the floor plan, but you also get your choice of what's not on the market. That's the biggest thing, is that people think what they see is exactly what's available. It's not, because if they release everything, it looks terrible when it has 50 things for sale on Street Easy or the RLS. The cons of buying early is that you don't know if the project is gonna sell well. So in other words, you don't know if it's gonna take years to get 50% in contract. And banks are not gonna lend. They're also not gonna get the certificate of occupancy, the developer. They're also, if, if a, a batch of apartments are still available, they're not gonna be able to actually close and be able to actually get all their money, the developers. So the project may not do well because of market slowdown, obviously maybe higher prices, they didn't price it right. 
and they're leaving you in contract with your deposit down. So that could be 10%, 15%, it could even be up, upwards of 20% of the purchase price. You are, there's actually one building on the Upper East Side that has been a year and a half overdue. And now the market is, has kind of went normalized and not hot market. And there's a lot of people that are like, eee, maybe I could have gotten it at a lower price. Also, you may be able to walk the building with a hard hat and, and walk into the actual unit. It may not be finished, but at least the, the concrete could be poured and you could say, oh, okay, here are the views, here's what I'm actually getting for my price. Deposit amount and time frame. This is what I talked about before, is that they kind of give you an estimated time that they're gonna be able to close. They, they give you an idea, but they also have it in the contract where they can push it out a year or push it out two years, or they can ask for more money down, which is you know 10% now, 5% in six months, and then an additional 5% at closing. And the reason being is that they have their own costs, obviously, to the bank. They have their own costs that they have to hold the property for construction, for financing, for, for interest rates. I highly recommend you find out how much you actually need to put down right now because if you lock up 20% for multiple years, it's a lot of money. Yes, you may get the product you want, but it's also one of those that you really have to talk with your real estate agent. Is it worth it? Because there's a lot, as, as I wrote down here, that take longer than expected. By the way, it's in the developer's contract that it, the flexibility of timing is always in favor of them. And you can't really say, well, you promised me, uh, 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 uh. look at the contract. It gives it gives them an out to close before or after. Closing costs, you know, transfer taxes are very expensive and obviously over 500,000, it's a little bit different than under 500,000. So it's it's 1.75%. So the transfer taxes and the seller attorney fees, that's something that you definitely take care of most of the time unless it's a bad marketplace. Working capital, working capital is essentially the area around the, you know, in, the best example is in um, in Brooklyn, there's something called the, or there's a, two new developments. There, there's called the Torin and the Oro in Brooklyn. In both of the buildings, they had to put in towards a capital fund that actually rejuvenated and put in beautiful trees along Flatbush Avenue. It was actually very expensive. I actually wrote down here that it could be equal to a couple of months of common charges. So that could be an extra couple thousand dollars that you put in there. I think actually it, it was expensive when my buyer bought. They bought like a $700,000 apartment. They put in a few extra thousand dollars that they had to put towards the capital working fund or the, the working capital fund. They said that different. Punch list. Let's talk about the punch list. So the punch list is essentially Essentially the walkthrough, obviously in new construction is totally different than a resale. A resale, you're looking at compiling a list of things that need to be fixed. You know, appliances, if there's flooring or the toilet doesn't flush or the, you know, something is happening with the electric, the outlet is out, you put money into, into escrow and essentially it needs to get fixed and then you, whatever amount that is, so if it's something with the toilet, you put $5,000 into the escrow and then it gets fixed. And then whatever the difference is, you you obviously get a new toilet and then the seller gets the remaining money. So the punch list is totally different in new construction. You get it exactly how it is in the actual offering plan. You get the exact appliances, you get the exact layout, you get the size, the closets, the washer dryer, everything like that. I actually just had a, a client that, that purchased and essentially they did not get the exact appliances. I had another client that was, they were guaranteed a walk-in closet and the walk-in closet didn't actually happen. The second thing was they were guaranteed a trash disposal in their drain and that didn't end up happening. So opportunity to get delivered a completely new product if there's a scratch on the floor, you can get it replaced. That's when you actually do a good punch list because they're probably not going to do as much work on minor things after you close. But before you close, the developer says, yeah, we'll do it now because we want to close. But if you close and then something happens or you notice something afterwards, they're probably not gonna do it as much or as willing as if they didn't close. So especially for minor things like a scratch on the floor or whatever, major things like appliances or countertops or chips or cracks or electrical or plumbing or something like that, they will do. 
but you want to do that all on the punch list, Not, especially when it comes to painting and walls and things like that. Last thing I want to say about this is research the developer. You have to research the developer because the developer essentially is someone that has a track record that they want to sell to the bank and say, hey, listen, you know, finance this project because we have a very successful track record of building new construction, selling out quickly, delivering product to the marketplace that is quality, is on time, and is something that, that you will get your money quickly because we're good. Everything is about a reputation with the developer. It, it's all online. I wrote down here, are, have they been sued? Check the public records. Is there any worrisome? And the public records and suing, if it's someone that actually puts a, a lien, a construction lien or a worker's lien, in other words, the plumber didn't get paid, that's not a big deal. But if someone actually sued the developer and said, hey, listen, you promised me this and I didn't get this, or you promised me this date and it's been two years, that's something that you really wanna look into. Or if it's a handful of residents that actually sued the developer, that's something you wanna find out before you actually buy again into that developers. You know, developers, they try and hide it as much as they can because they're, they know their reputation in the past is everything about what they do and how much they sell for in the future. There's a couple of developers in, in New York City that are just massive developers. They do the exact work that they need and they keep on selling out and they have quality, quality, just reputation in reviews behind them. So highly recommend. And then actually the last thing is the 421A tax abatement. So this is something that you're probably going to run across and it, it could be 10 years, 15, 20 years. I highly recommend you understand how long that tax abatement is. In short, it's it's like the city taxed the land if there were no if there was no building and that's and it goes up 20% every 2 years until it fully vests. I have a building right now, it's 555 West 59th Street, it vests fully in 2020, so obviously the buyers that came in, they said, you know, how much is it gonna go up? And I said, it only goes up another 20%, which is only a few hundred dollars on a $1.85 million property. So the tax abatement, it's not really given out, if at all, in New York City. And the reason being is that they noticed that it was a great incentive for developers, but they don't really need it anymore because developers are still gonna develop, they're still gonna buy land, they're still gonna convert. Obviously, they're gonna have to look at their closing costs and, and their cost of acquisition, and how much they're gonna sell it for and everything else. But 421 is a, is a big benefit that you can reduce your taxes in the short term, and if you actually sell while there's still a tax abatement, that's obviously a selling point. So that's a long-winded way to say new construction is an amazing way to go. So highly recommend you guys uh, check out new construction. It is completely different than buying resale, obviously the punch list, uh, working with brokers, the closing costs, and things like that. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Have an amazing day. And when someone actually says new construction or you see a sign, there is a way to see pricing because they have, to, they have to file it with the Department of Buildings. They have to file it with the state. So if you want to see a new construction, give us a call. If, if someone's saying, no, it's not going to be ready, there, there's some ways to actually find out when it's going to be ready, when they're going to release products, what it, what's, the, what's the sizing, what's the pricing, things like that. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Have an amazing day.